Welcome back, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again today. Sorry I didn't get a video out to you a little bit earlier this week, but I had done something to my back. I'm not sure what I did, but uh, I spent the last few days with a heating pad and some mm, rest and legs up and <laughs> not moving real, real well. Today I'm feeling much, much better, so I thought I'd pop in here and do a quick video. Uh, if you're if you've been here before, welcome. Thanks for stopping in again. And if you're brand new to my channel, uh, very special welcome to you. Thanks for taking the time out to stop in my channel and see what I'm all about. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button down below, that bell button down below, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And with that, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do today is we want to ink up a piece of uh, white cardstock. I'm gonna play with the Distress Oxide inks. So I've got Wilted Violet, I've got Kitsch Flamingo, and the new Salvaged Patina. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start with the Wilted Violet. I'll move you in just a little bit closer here. Sorry, wrong direction. There we go. I'm just using my little finger dabber. I'm gonna pick up some ink off that ink pad and I want to come in it at an angle and just get some of that ink down on this cardstock. I don't know about a third quarter somewhere in there and then I'm gonna come in with my Kitsch Flamingo next And I'm gonna blend those two in together. Oh, picked up a string. I like the little round finger dabbers because they don't leave any harsh edges like um, the square foam pads do. So we'll just come in and get a little bit more of that pink on there. Oh, this pink is just gorgeous. I want to blend a little bit more of that into the purple. Go over that again. There we go. Kind of a little bit more pink than I have uh, the purple. And then last, the Salvage Patina. I am in love with this salvage patina. It is a beautiful, beautiful color. And again, we're just gonna come in, we're just gonna get, get that on here, get that blended in. Bring that up into the pink a little bit. They just blend together so beautifully. There we go, just like that. Nothing too, too terribly hard. No, no rhyme or reason as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it wouldn't be a distress card if I didn't have a little bit of water splatter. So I'm just putting a little bit of water in my hands. And then I'm just gonna flick all those splatters down there. Take a piece of paper towel, give it a second or two to to sit and then I'm just gonna pull up those water spots that just gives it a little bit of distress a little fun fun touch all right so I'm gonna let that dry for a second and while that's drying I'm gonna pull my big shot in I'll move you out now and I want to do a background for this card. So I think, I think I really like the look of the craft against the bright colors of the oxide. So I've got my um, Tim Holtz alterations. It's the brick wall stencil. It's been around for forever. I'm gonna put my cardstock in there. Make my sandwich. Run it 
through. And I've got this great textured brick wall piece. And then, now that this has had a chance to dry, I'm going to cut this. And I've got the uh, Tim Holtz again, Alterations. It's the Layered Butterfly die. It's, again, it's another old one, but if you've got, you know, any butterfly die will work. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this one in particular. And I'm going to lay that in there, make my sandwich. Run that through my machine. And I've got this beautiful butterfly cut. Alright, just move my machine out of the way here. We're done with the machine. those out of the way so we've got room to work perfect all right so I want to bring out that brick texture a little bit more I'm gonna bring you back in so you can see what's going on here I'm gonna use my little branding blending brush and I'm gonna use the uh, archival ink in coffee and I'm just lightly going to come in and rub that on the brick wall. That's just going to bring it out a little bit more, give it a little bit more life. One of the fun things with this die, as you can see, it's got, or this uh, embossing folder, it's kind of got these little edging, edges on it. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to tear away from myself along, along that seam where those edges are, just to just to, to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit of fun. And give that brick wall a little bit more of a, of a brick wall feel. There we go. Just to take away those edges. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors. Uh, and I just want to take and rough up these, these edges here that are still solid. So all I've done is I just take the paper right into the V of the scissors and I'm just running that, that along there just to, just to give it some texture, give it some age make it look less pristine. I don't want a real pristine look and feel to this card. So I hope everybody had a good week. Like I said, my week was pretty quiet. I hurt my back, so uh, wasn't a lot of anything going on. I Took it easy, rested, tried to heal up a little bit. There we go. You don't need lots, but just a little bit to, to just give it some, some age in there. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to go around that edge again and darken, darken up those roughed up and torn pieces.
There we go. All right, now on to our butterfly. We're going to distress the heck out of this butterfly too. So I'm going to lay my butterfly on here like this. And I'm going to flip it over and take a pencil line, a pencil or a pen or something. Uh, it looks like a pen is what I have handy. And I just want to mark where that brick wall is. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it around or if I'll just cut it off straight, but at least uh, I'll have an idea of uh, where that is. And then I'm going to take my hole punch. It's just a plain old hole punch. It's actually quite a small one. And everything on this side of my line, I'm going to hole punch. And I'm going to just tatter up Powder up these butterfly wings. This is a favorite technique of mine. I do this so often on scrapbook layouts, cards, junk in my junk journals. And I'm just just tattering it up, just getting that hole punch in there and just punching away. So I'm not gonna make you uh, watch me do this whole section so I'll be back when I'm done. Alright I'm back as you can see I've got all my holes in my butterfly punched and uh, he's ready to be glued down. I want to put a little bit of texture in here first so I'm gonna just pull in some twine and I'm gonna want that to go around the card twice. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this butterfly glued down. I'm going to use my 3-in-1 beacon. And all I'm going to do is just squeeze out just the tiniest little drops of glue here and there wherever there's kind of a thicker piece of card left between all the holes. I just I like this technique. I find it, it to me, it just feels like it's kind of lacy. Um, and it's distressy and it's grunge and it's all those things that I really, really like. So I'm just got that going. And I'm going to turn it over and just kind of line up those lines that I had on the back. Push it down and then come in and cut that off. You know, I kind of like this little bit of the wing that's still hanging over there, but I need to make sure it's going to fit inside the envelope. So I'll cut that and I'm just going to continue to punch this little piece up here yet. There we go. So I've got that on. Oh, I want to get my twine in there. Let's see. through there I want the crisscross to be over towards the side I think ah it's gonna settle there I'll leave it all right so one of the things I do when I'm attaching string to a card is I take a piece of painter's tape, I put a fairly decent little blob of glue, 
take my strings, crisscross them through the glue, and then I tape them down over top of the glue, and that just gives the glue a chance to hold. The strings will stay put. Alright, now we have to make our sentiment. So I'm going to pull out my stamping platform here, and I'm going to use a stamp from from this from a set called uh, Because I Care. It's an old Stamping Up stamp set. Something I'm doing is I'm slowly going through and um, removing all my red rubber stamps off the off the wood blocks mainly because they take up so much space in those cases. Something else I like to do is mass cut labels or dies that I might use frequently. So we just I'm going to be holding that in place. And the sentiment I'm going to use is called Because I Care. I like that because I think you can use it um, for any occasion. Uh, you can use it as a sympathy card, you can use it as a friendship card, uh, thinking of you. I think it's a pretty versatile um, greeting that you can use. And I'm going to use my black archival ink to stamp it. And my little stamp buddy here. Push that down. So I remove, uh, I just pull up the um, the, the st red rubber stamp piece off of my wooden blocks and then I have sheets of cling, um, cling foam that I remount them to to turn them into a cling stamp and I love, uh, love how easy it is and then it allows me to use my stamping platform here and it also allows me to be able to re restamp an image if it needs restamping. Um, you just, I find sometimes with the with the um, wooden block stamps, it's a little bit harder to see if you've got something lined up. And if it isn't lined up, it's almost impossible to restamp where you'd want it. And so that's going to be the sentiment. It's going to go there. I think I'm going to age that. Distress that with a little bit of the wilted violet. So it stands out from the background. And I want that raised up a bit, so I'm just using my foam mounting tape. I buy this at the dollar store. It's in the hardware section in the dollar store. It's um, like a weather stripping foam or something like that. Uh, I get a big roll. I don't pay a lot and uh, I can make it whatever size I need it to be which is why I, I use it. And then I'm going to put that sentiment onto the card and glue my card onto its base. And instead of having having a card, um, I th this card will go this way. So it's five and a half by four and a quarter. Most cards are five and a quarter, or five and a half by four and a quarter. I just happen to have bases that that are like this, and I like that uh, that you can see the white of the card behind. So let's get some more adhesive on that. And again, I'm never shy with my adhesive, especially when I'm gluing something something down. I want, I want to make sure I've got lots of adhesive. There we go. I'll just give that a minute to, to grab. 
And then because I really kind of want a bit of a extra embellishment on here, a little bling bling if it is were. Um, I need There we go. Sorry about that. And the only thing I don't like about my beacon is as the bottle starts to get low, you get more spit out of the glue of the adhesive. Um, so I just want to throw a few little gems on there. And I've got some glue in a tiny little bottle with a little needle. Needle nose. Oh, and my glue doesn't want to stick today, so let's just put a little bit more of this on. We'll use this glue. There we go. All right, so let's put a little gemstone there. I just think uh, if you can get away with putting rhinestones or pearls or extra decorations and stuff, you should. Got a couple of different sizes of rhinestones that'll go on here. And I just I have this old gem picker from um, from a diamond dot painting, and that's what I use. If you don't have one. Um, I've uh, used MacTac on a skewer, barbecue skewer, before to uh, pick up my gems. Sorry, I'm slowly moving the card out of the way. Talked to my oldest daughter t uh, yesterday. She lives out in Manitoba, and their province has gone back into heavy lockdown again, so she was feeling a little bit bummed out. It's not looking like she'll be able to come and visit this summer unless things drastically change. But we're optimistic that maybe she'll make it here for Christmas this year. We missed Christmas last year with her, as so many people did. There wasn't a lot of traveling going on. Everything was locked down last year. Perfect. But I'm looking forward to, to summer. I'm looking forward to some hot days, maybe some days at the beach, just being a beach bum. Do you have any summer plans? What do you have planned? I still haven't got my garden in. It's been cold. We finally got some much needed rain the other day. Um, so now we're waiting for things to kind of dry out. Here at our rain gauge showed one, one and a quarter inches, one and a half inches, somewhere in there. But it, uh, like I said, it was much, much needed and then it's been kind of cool since. Today it's windy. I've been listening to the wind howl all day. I find the wind tends to play me out. I'm not sure what it is about a windy day, but I find that that can make me quite tired. I think this will be my last rhinestone that I'm going to put on. All right, so there you go. There's the last, last rhinestone. Let me know what you think of this card. Is it a technique you might try with the hole punch? Can you uh, see yourself using it to distress something? 
I know it's not everybody's style, but uh, it is something that I really, really like. I uh, crazy about that distress stuff. Always have been, I think I always will. So once again, I want to thank you for joining me, old and new. I really, really appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. I respond to every comment I get and I really appreciate anyone uh, who takes the time to, to leave me a comment. And if you uh, did like this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with a friend maybe who might also uh, enjoy watching it. You have yourself a really great rest of your weekend and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye-bye.